Welcome to another export of Success Strategies Africa. We are here to bring you, to inspire you, uh, basically the small and medium enterprises, young entrepreneurs, you motivation speakers, uh, business collaborations, uh, investment consultations, changing. Uh, today, I'm your host again, Nduga Ashraf Darawish. I'm here with uh, Managing uh, Director of Bonecraft Studio. He uh, has made it and uh, in the industry of art and design has made several awards that you see people are being awarded on several occasions. He has published a number of books. Uh, the latest book that he has ever given to me, it was uh, Beyond Education, it was a good book that really I enjoyed. Uh, I got it from him, it's called Bonnie Asimwe. Allow me to give him a chance uh, to introduce himself to us. It's a great pleasure, you know, being hosted by such mindset uh, changing, you know, programs. Uh, I'm called Bonventure Asimwe Tuanje. Uh, like you've mentioned, I'm um, a visual artist by training. And so uh, my, pre uh, my trade basically is in the line of creating. Um, I trained as an industrial artist. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in industrial art and design. But uh, along the way, um, I joined publishing uh, as a passion. So basically, Bonacraft St uh, Studios um, is, is, is a merged kind of uh, project that deals in uh, uh, creating accolades and awards and then printing or publishing. Right. Can you tell us more about what is Bonne Craft Studios and what do you do and what do you specifically uh, invade in? Um, ha, there is a history to Bonne Craft Studios. Um, I'm a very passionate. Uh, I'm very passionate uh, about creating. So my initial dream of Bonne Craft Studios was uh, recording. I I had chanced on some of the books. Uh, from the Gutenberg book project. I wasn't, say, a musician, but I was thinking about how we can merge art. For example, how can I make an audio book and stuff like that. So basically, how Bonacraft started was not necessarily focusing uh, at publishing or printing. But, uh, you know, my recording studio was uh, robbed. Then I was thinking of how to stand up again. So, and all these ideas of uh, publishing, because I had published my first uh, book when I was in my second year at the university, so I found it easy to, to readjust the business into publishing. And then, of course, the awards uh, was the trade that I trained in uh, professionally as a visual artist. It takes a lot to when someone says a visual artist and someone who doesn't really understand this, uh, can you please help him or her to understand what a visual artist it takes and what does it mean? Visual art uh, is a range of many things. Even what you're doing right now is a branch of visual art. Uh, photography, cinematography, fashion and design, communication design, sculpture, modeling, painting. Everything visual can fall under visual art. So basically, I, has, I have mentioned before that I trained in industrial art and design. That's why I have my undergraduate. So when you're coming through the art school, as a visual artist, you are equipped with um, a wide range of skills uh, before you select an elective or specialization. So <coughs> visual art, basically everything visual that can be artistic. So, so it's as wide as that. I have learned that if you don't tell your story, no one tells it. I have had an opportunity to have an interview. But if I did not have this interview, assume that I lived a life full of challenges and I didn't tell my story, then I would go to my grave with it. And even if you hired someone and you built a bigger grave, they would just come and say, this person lived from this age to that. No one would know your story. No one knows how you would wake up in a day, walk, or the challenge you would go through. So I went back to writing, and I basically write in a local language. I have actually started on a project uh, to help people who are writing in local languages. I've done some books like Omuganda Chika, I've uh, worked on projects in Luma Saba, Lukonjo, 
I have learned that as Africans, we need to tell our stories. Because if we don't tell our stories, someone manipulates or change our history. It could be the attention to what you have observed in life before you got this education that is also Eurocentric. We need to do that. So I'm writing a book that I started on like about 10, 13 years ago. I'm co-authoring with an old uh, woman who is in her 80s. And it's basically looking at all those dimensions of, say, what has been available here that we've not um, exploited, uh, why Africa. It's, it's a bigger subject, but here and there I keep mentioning all those things. And that's uh, the only way I felt I would contribute to my society. The small conversations are with Mr. Boni Asimwe, the managing director of Bonnycraft uh, Studio. He has a story behind that he has not told us. He, he told me actually, I and my camera person, that uh, after university things were not the same. Uh, that's why he came out with such a way so that he can at least uh, pave a way for, uh, for him so that he can reach a certain level of success. Uh, how did you find it after the university and which year was that? Um, uh, in, uh, in 20... Uh 2011, I was finishing my undergraduate. You know, you know, one of the difficult questions uh, I find, one of the questions I find difficult to answer is how I started. And, and you know, one, I, 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 I've mentioned I come from Mitoma district, which is um, uh, Bushen Greater. It was cut from Bushen Greater. And uh, I'm an orphan, I should have mentioned that. So I lost my dad when I was in P2, my mother in the early years before I went to secondary. So when you, you come to the heart of the city and you are to start, most people who have a start, they have a family. So uh, when I finished university, I did not have a relative here, not even a, an uncle or a far away distant you know, relative. So it was, I, I can't, I, I don't know how to even explain it. It was just like being thrown into a jungle. Because I, there is also an extensive story on, on how my friend called Mustafa drove me in his car and dropped me here. I was to stay with some person I knew who was a border border cyclist. I did not have one rent. I did not have uh, even, you know, a saucepan. But I just came. And I can't say that... I had even thought hard about it. You know, one of the instincts of survival, when you believe that one, you're genuine, you, sometimes you don't know how you act in certain situations. Because one thing I knew, I knew that my training as an industrial artist would not find business in Mitoma district. Because industrial art and design is, um, is, 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 uh, is a career that needs to be in urban centers. So one thing I knew, I'd qualified as an industrial artist. I did not have a start to life. Uh, and I knew I wasn't supposed to go back to the village. Actually, I did not graduate because uh, I had saved some money from uh, savings because I was on gov government sponsorship. I knew that if I make a graduation party, I will lose that shilling. So I had uh, saved, I think, 1.8 million because I was doing crafts and stuff. I knew that that money won. Of course, the other project, they had not paid me. So I had done a project with a certain company that, that was promising to pay me in a contract. So I postponed my graduation. Then I had around 140. But my friend Mustafa could drive me in his van to here. So it's long. It's, it's, it's something that I cannot... Uh, explain well why I made that decision. But one thing I knew and I was very sure about, I needed to be here. I didn't know how, I didn't know how to start. Then as the money came in, I postponed my gradua graduation and I used it to buy a border border. So that's basically how it worked. First thing, it shows the passionate and the determinations Mr. Asimwe had had driven him up to where he is. I personally have witnessed him making several awards uh, physically I would like to know how many awards so far have you done for uh, if at all you can give me this year and if at all you can explain in the short. 
um, I should mention this that the award art was not among the specific uh, uh, qualifications I, 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 I had but I, I realized that award art was something unique they weren't doing awards here and most of the awards would be imported from China it could be a glass that you have to engrave on so basically when I finished the university I had a call I think by then it was Young Achievers Awards I went there for that call and then there were interviews so remember award art could be say cast metal it could be plastic it could be so basically when I went for that Young Achievers Awards uh, it was in 2009, yes, it opened opportunities because I think I had gotten an interview and then we had to go for the gala at, at Serena. Then I had for the first time not met people who were in the business of giving out awards and I mixed and mingled with a few people. So that's when I said, wow, this is great. So after Young Achievers Award, of course, there were several other awards. I've done awards for Young Entertainment Awards some awards from Southern Sudan, I've done uh, uh, Pamoja Festival Burundi, I've made uh, Young Achievers Awards, I've made, um, uh, there is a, a certain church, was it called Mavuno, with the Maasai Warrior Award, I've uh, made awards for uh, Born to Serve, I've done awards for, you know, which else, I've, quite, I've made quite a number of award projects. People they are receiving awards, but they don't know the man behind the, those awards. So, happily receiving an award, but locally made awards, I really love it. He talked about most awards we are being imported. So he came out with the event. Uh, he came out with the idea of making the award. Uh, that's so interesting, uh, Mr. Simwe. Do you have someone who inspired you to do what you're doing now? Oh, you know, you know, every time I take an interview. To, it, it, it's like a snippet into my life. I told you I lost my parents when I was young. I come from a very humble background. We did not even have anything to start with, but my father had built a library. So if I would say the first person to inspire me into, in, in this I'm doing was my father, who was a village catechist. I think he had studied up to primary three, and uh, he did not have any inheritance, but whenever I would come and do manual work here in Buganda, he would go back with a book. So we grew up when our home had a library. We were the most humble family in the village, but we had a fully fledged library. So I grew up to find Encyclopedia Britannica's, to find uh, Ogundupe books. And our father, every time, would tell us that I'm a poor man, I don't have anything to inherit, for you to inherit, but this library is your start to life. So the first person to inspire me now becomes my father, who was a village uh, Catholic church catechist. And then after, of course, we were a pretty disciplined young people. We knew Twali Twemani Jetova. So when he passed on, uh, of course, my mother did not know how to write. But, you know, she had learned from the parenting of our father that this is important for us. So we were disciplined, but we also knew we had nothing to life and we had to learn the manners to fend for ourselves. So when he passed on, that became my first mentor. That's be that became my first advice into life. Of course, my schooling, I would work in schools. Then I, at some point, I, I was living in a church, uh, being uh, paid after by a Catholic uh, parish. You know, my life has been mentored by a million people. Because at some point, I, I had to, you know, I would be working in a school, maybe I'm working at the director's school, then I'm staying at his home. When I was in my HSC, I was working in a grape vineyard, you know, working every after school. Then I got other people, like uh, I, 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 I went to Kayunga, I went to Namagavi, then I met another generous uh, Muslim man who helped me. Then I came to, um, after that, when I was at the university, my good friend who recommended me for a first business was uh, an SDA youth reader. So basically, if you ask about mentorship, I've been mentored by a million people. And uh, in our tribe, we have a proverb that if you are an orphan and you have no one to advise you, you have to open your ears wide. So that even if you're passing by the roadside and you hear one 
disciplining their child, you can take a lesson from it. So basically, I've been uh, mentored by a million people. What inspired you? What inspired There's something me? that inspired you, beside mentoring, but it's mm. something that inspired you to do what you're doing right now. I think necessity is the mother of in invention. You see, most times we feel safe or we are af afraid to start exploring because we feel either we are privileged. But you know, when you wake up in the morning, I think as human beings, and you have nowhere to start from, you have to innovate on how to survive. So basically, I cannot say I'm smart or I sat and scratched my head, but necessity or being in a position of lacking made me a bit fluid. Of course, with the background of having good manners, then of course with the background of a parent telling you that you have nothing in life, you better start going out and fending for yourself. That kind of became a basis, and up to now it's what kind of motivates me, that you have to literally go out, meet friends like I've met you, or I met you, and then connect with people and you work out something for yourself. We also have a proverb in our language that you know, if I can say it in Lenyankore, Ngu, Ebisabye Nega Negesa, Bine Chisegura, that, you see, this neck, by the time you fall sick and you say this, you have to be sure that someone is going to hold your neck. But if there is no one to hold your neck, then it means even if you're sick, you have to make sure you stand straight. So those are some of the motivational uh, snippets that kind of motiv uh, uh, makes me carry on. But moving out the comfort zone, that's what he was trying to explain. When you really feel that your neck side is really paining you and you're expecting someone to come and hold you to make it right, at times there will not be someone to do that. So that is forces you to move out your comfort zone. And I think is uh, he said, a charity begins at home. What you give to your child right away from down it's also a key if you want someone to be successful in his or her life uh mr simway as we go further uh what are the what are some of the mistakes uh you, you, you should say that these are the mistakes that if i till i uh i wish i would avoid at least someone should avoid this with the of success oh my good god i have made a million mistakes in my life like i mentioned you know when you see in life people uh, become better and wiser when they have immediate people to cross-check how they behave and perform. And every time, you know, I have siblings I look after, I keep reminding them that, that me, I have made a million mistakes. Because one, I was raised by different people. And let truth, let truth be told, even if you get a, a generous philanthropist eh, to help you, there is a certain search you have to take on as an individual, as a, a person. So, if you ask me of the mistakes I've made, there are more than even a, a slight glances of success I've achieved. Because my life has been experimental. You know, you wake up, you do something, it fails. If you have, from the time, for example, I met you, I've done a million businesses. I had a recording studio that was robbed. At some point, I had a border border business. They cheated me because I didn't know how to ride it. And the person who mentored me was a mechanic who inspired me to do the business. So for them, they could manage it. For me, I could not. Uh, when I was growing up, talking about what I wanted to be, I've survived on industrial art and design, but I never loved it. I wanted to be at some point a lawyer, at some point uh, a mechanic. So it's like I, I can't sing any praises to myself that I've been a smart guy, you know, trying to scratch my head and do things. I've made a million mistakes. And one of the greatest mistakes I think you can make when you are a person who steps into life without a person who is close by to mentor you, could be your parent, could be your, uh, your, your religious leader in a mosque or at a church, is, is that you literally experiment and fail, experiment and fail. Do this, it fails. You try that. So basically, if you talk about mistakes I've made in my life, there are many. And the worst mistake I think I keep doing, which I, is that I'm a person who can easily trust someone. And that is also from the background of my upbringing. Because people who have helped me, trusted me, I trusted them. 
So most of the mistakes I've found, you know, going back and forth in my life, is that I get some friends because I don't come from a privileged family who give me advice, but even when they don't give me genuine advice, so they make me fall, then I wake up and something like that. Thank you very much. We are the inspiration in action, Success Strategies Africa. You can follow us more of this on our social media handles, uh, YouTube, Success Strategies Africa, Facebook, Success Strategies Africa, LinkedIn, Success Strategies Africa. You can also email to us, Success Strategies Africa at gmail.com. Uh, the man I'm with, he is the managing director of Bonnycroft Studio in Uganda. He talked about uh, very many things, continuity, uh, in your journey, never to give up. When you ask about uh, the mistake he has done, he says he has done a number of mistakes, but you only fail when you quit. Not so. Exactly. You only fail when you quit. We would like to know, uh, as today, when you talk about the youth, uh, that's where we are going now. And everybody in Uganda, the youth are almost make 70% of the populations. Uh, when you talked about the success, you cannot talk about success minus leaving out the youths. How can the young people in Uganda today prepare themselves for success? You know, like I've mentioned, I'm an experimental person, and I cannot say that I chose to do this, then I'm here. But I can also talk about uh, some small few things that uh, have helped me, which I think the youth can 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 learn from uh, one i i don't disrespect any person you find me mingling and mixing with the land the not land um, if i'm lucky to meet the rich because i'm not from a privileged family i can listen from them some could be my clients and they give me advice so that has been very important now the world is moving fast even with motivational speeches, people can chance on a book, on, on a, a link, and they even have a subject, let's say, how to make money or how to do this and this and this and that. So because the world is moving fast, because the world is moving fast, it means even uh, subject of motivation uh, becomes very, very difficult. It's not like a copy and paste strategy. Because in the lockdown, People were writing books because they ran to Google and they, they googled how can you be rich fast and people would say write books, people have written books that failed. So I'm always afraid to, to, to say that this is what specifically you need to do, especially in a changing environment we live in. But the basics would be one, respect everyone, that's very important. Two, if the opportunity comes by, grab it. Three, don't just wait and think that uh, some magic will from him, from heaven and fall down. For example, if I talk about this opportunity, if Ashraf had not seen me make awards with friends, he wouldn't have given me an opportunity to have an interview. Three, I wouldn't, I can't know where this video goes and the opportunity that can come with it. If I had disrespected him, he wouldn't come here. So you see, these are small, small, small things that I think I've learned. One, respect everyone. Two, if the opportunity comes, grab it network you know this has been a network and uh, you know don't be lazy everyone has something to offer to the world thank you very much we are still discussing the way of success with mr bonnie asimwe uh bonaventure asimwe he is the managing director of bonnycroft studios uh, the book i'm holding i was given it two years i was given uh, by him two years ago uh, it's called beyond education uh i never minded about what was inside we you know you never judge a book by its cover he talked about respect each and every body that comes across let him be educated and educated grabbing opportunities that's way of success uh we're really so grateful if at all do not mind uh, share us with us what are you grateful to for you today oh, i'm also grateful for many things one life really when you live when you're, 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 you're alive and living, you have to be grateful for it. But also I'm grateful for my parents. You know, life is not a mistake. Life in all forms, whether it's a life in struggle, a life in lessons, learning, you know, you have to be grateful for every passing minute of your life. Because very many people 
have had even better opportunities, but they are not. They are not. Uh, life has not been any different from even say someone. So basically, you have to be grateful that one you live. Like I mentioned, you see, one thing I also learned. You know, right, good things or bad things come to you. You all have to be grateful for each because if it's a bad thing, you learn from it. If it's a good thing, toyeguru mizanga then you know that this is good. But then how do I become better? Because good has better and best, you know, that superlative kind of thing. Conclude, Mr. Simwe. Uh, what is your morning routine when you're starting your day? Mm, I'm a, a prayerful person. Not the one you'd find, you know, <coughs> maybe sleeping in a church or what. But I know that my life behind my life there has been a God and these days I've been very very careful of reducing to a God to a certain religious denomination I think God is this uh, uh, kind to humanity that even in our tribulations in our mistakes they keep on blessing you so my morning routine uh, is that I actually, most times I don't pray, I thank God. I say, God, thank you. I could be going through a lot. I could be lacking. But thank you and I'm glad I'm here. So basically that's my daily routine. Then in between the routine, if it's a business, I follow it. If it's a call, I make it. I love reading. If it's to read, I do it. If I'm to meet a friend, I, I meet them. And then I wait for God to do the rest. Because the rest you can't have control over it. Conversations really, it has been really a pleasure because a lot has been discussed in today's conversations. Uh, you talked about following up your program, praying to God so that He is the creator of each and everything, uh, He's the sustainer of, of each and everything that you think about it. You don't know what's coming tomorrow, you don't know what's coming the next hour. So, when you so prayer to God, everything will be in control. Uh, as we conclude our Anything that you would like to say in a few words? Wrap up this. I think I've mentioned most of the things. Basically, I would say, because I've said that my life has been uh, a mix of many things, we have to be motivated by ourselves. Me, that's the final word I would, I would say. Because we are living in a conflicted world, everyone is focusing on themselves. It's very important to be self-motivated. We learn from our mistakes and look for ways of moving forward. That's how we can progress. If we pay attention and we think that some helper will from from heaven or whatever it is, then we are deluded. Because in this fast-moving world, most people are focusing on themselves. So it's very important for every day you step out to one, forgive yourself, counsel yourself, motivate yourself and move forward. To me, that's how I would wrap up. Really, self-motivation is an, a key to whatever you're doing in your life so that you really, if you want to succeed. Uh, he has been uh, Bonaventure, Bonaventure Asimwe, uh, our guest today, uh, the way to success on success strategies Africa. He's the managing director, Bodycraft Studio, has made several awards. He's the masterpiece uh, when we come to award making, uh, he has done a lot uh, printing of several books, as later which I've showed you with uh, you later. Uh, he has also published a number of books, so I think he has given us what it calls to be a successful person in life. Mm -hmm.